Hey, Joe here from Home Studio Corner. We're going to do a vocal mix rescue today. Let's just dive in and see what happens. So here is a set of tracks that one of my subscribers sent to me. His name is Ori, O-R-R-Y, which is a super cool name. And basically he says, I've got, my room is fairly treated. It's pretty dead sounding. There's blankets on the wall, fairly squarish room, but there's not a lot of ambience. He says, my vocal recordings have one major issue. Between the 4 and 8K range, there's always very harsh whistling frequencies. I discovered they're a product of my actual voice, which is annoying, but no matter how much I EQ them, either the vocal will sound way too dull, and the lower frequencies within the range 1 to 2K, I'm sorry, and the lower frequencies within the 1 to 2K range will now start to whistle, or I'll notch out only to bring have the frequencies brought back during compression. Uh, he's curious if it's a mic placement thing or what to do about it. So I have listened briefly just to make sure the tracks were working. Um, I have some thoughts, but let's put on your producer hat. You're me. You're sitting in the chair. Listen to this and tell me what you think in the comments or just to yourself. Okay, here we go. This is just a piano vocal. I think it's a cover. I'm bulletproof, nothing to lose. Fire away, fire away. Ricochet, you take your aim, fire away, fire away. So my first impressions, let's listen again with just the vocal. This is the raw vocal, nothing on it. I'm bulletproof, nothing to lose, fire away, fire away. Super sweet vocal tone, and I don't hear anything here that bothers me. I'm not listening to this saying, oh my goodness, the 4 to 8K range is super bright and whistly. So this is the kind of the point I want to make in this video, and I've talked about this before. There's a fine line between finding problems and creating problems. I talk about how a lot of the way that I mix, the approach that I take, uh, and it's in my mix guide that I'll tell you about at the end of the video, is to set levels for everything and then listen for problems, fix problems, and then listen again. And you're just constantly fixing problems until it feels good. So you're getting rid of the bad stuff and then enhancing the good stuff. Problem is, you can hear me give you that advice and then you'll turn around and go try to find problems or try to create, almost create problems rather than just listening and determining what the problems actually are. And that can be a big problem. And let me just show you what I'm talking about here. So. There, there's this thing about, I always have to be careful when I teach EQ, because you could put EQ on anything, and you could take just a basic EQ, and you can do this right here. A big, fairly narrow boost, and guess what? You will find things that don't sound good, guaranteed every time. So when I'm, when I'm telling people, yeah, I want to boost up here to find that frequency so that I can cut it, they'll take that advice and they'll go do something like this. I'm bulletproof, nothing to lose, fire. Okay, there's a bad frequency there, let me cut it. I'm bulletproof. Okay, there's a bad frequency there, let me cut it. I'm bulletproof, nothing. Oh yeah, real bad frequency there, let me cut it. I'm bulletproof, nothing to lose. Yeah, there's a bad frequency there. You see what I'm talking about? We, we can, you can literally find just by narrow, big boosts, you can find plenty of stuff that sounds bad. That doesn't mean that each of those needs to be cut. It's a dangerous game to play, and it's one of those that you've got to just exercise some restraint as you're learning how to use EQ. Check out my Understanding EQ course. It'll help you with this a lot, understandingeq.com. Anyway, not the point of this video. Uh, so when I listen to this vocal, I hear a nice, bright, clean vocal need to take a little bit of low end out, and then obviously we're going to probably compress it. So let's do that and just see if we, maybe after doing that, we hear some of the problems that are there. So I'm going to take my fat channel plug-in that I have seemed to not be able to find. Okay. And let's just do, let's roll off a little bit of low end, and then I'll add compression and a little bit of just basic EQ. I'm going to switch this compressor, though. This uh, classic compressor is so dope, as the kids say. Uh, so let's just see what we can do here. I'm going to roll off the low end until it's not quite so boomy, then add some compression and EQ and see what happens. I'm bulletproof, nothing to lose. Fire away, fire away. Ricochet, you take your aim. Fire away, fire away. You shoot me down, but I won't fall. I am titanium. You shoot me down, but I won't fall. I am titanium. I'm 
I'm bulletproof, nothing to lose Fire away, fire away Ricochet, you take your aim Fire away The only thing I hear is the sibilance on like ricochet So like a, a de of some sort would help So I'll do that with just a basic um, uh, multi-band compressor here Let me put that on first in the chain Take care of that ricochet so it's not quite so harsh, and I think I'm good. Ricochet. Right there, let's deal with that. Uh, let me turn this band off. Let's take just the really high frequencies. Ricochet, 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 you take your aim. Ricochet, you take. All right, here's before. Ricochet. Shh, really loud, here's after. Ricochet. It's a little more tame, a little more normal, natural sounding. Ricochet, you take your aim. Fire away, fire away. You shoot me down. I feel like it's got some upper mid range stuff happening, but it's kind of the frequencies that'll allow it to kind of cut through. I will, now that we have this here, let's take one of these EQs. I'm not sure why there are two there. Uh, and let's do something on, after everything we've done at the end of the chain. Let me go listen. There may be an upper mid-range that you could cut a little bit to smooth it out so it's not quite so harsh up there, but I don't think it's as high as 4 to 8K, which is what Ori said it was. Ricochet, you take your aim. Fire away, fire away. You shoot me down, but I won't fall. I am titanium. For me, I, go, I a lot of times land in that 2 to 4K range as being a little nasally resonant sounding. Right now, it's hitting at 2.85K, so just shy of 3. So I'm going to take that frequency and cut it. Ricochet, you take your aim. Fire away, fire away. You shoot me down. That's subtle. Here it is without the EQ, and then I'll turn it back on. You'll see it. When you see the EQ curve, you'll know it's on. Let's listen to it a couple of times. Ricochet, you take your aim. Ricochet, you take your aim. Ricochet, you take your aim. That may sound exactly the same to you. Let me help you hear that a little more. When he says ricochet, he's saying doing like a diphthong thing where he goes, a that kind of uh, 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 right there at the end of a there's a ringing there like a right in there and that ringing is just happening in the way he sings by cutting out that frequency the ring doesn't really happen anymore and it just sounds like he's singing ricochet instead of ricochet and has that ringing there let me do it again so you can hear the difference ricochet you take your aim ricochet you take your aim it's very subtle. It doesn't transform the voice. It doesn't sound wildly different. It's just a little smoother and sounds a little better with the piano. Ricochet, you take your aim. Fire away, fire away. And you could make the case for the SH sound on Shay. Ricochet. You could maybe EQ that down or maybe use another band of multiband to pull that little part down that's a little louder because it's lower than like what a de is typically working on. And that's the only other thing I would maybe do on this vocal. Again, it's just a piano vocal, so the vocal's really exposed, and I like the tone that we have. So, Ori, to answer your question, a couple of things. First of all, fabulous voice. This is you singing. Really great voice. Killer. Love it. Uh, secondly, I don't think there's a problem up in the 4 to 8K range. If anything, there's a little whistling at like 2 to 3K that you can pull down to taste if you hear it in the mix. Otherwise, uh, I think you might be suffering from finding problems that aren't there, which is which is fine. Everybody does it. I do it too. Try to hold back and try to just keep working on the mix and not honing in so closely on the vocals for a while. I think you'll find your vocal mixes will get better because you're doing less, kind of like the video I posted last week. All right, that's it for me. If you want more tips like this to learn how to make your mixes hit better, sound smoother, punchier, bigger, whatever the word is that you're looking for, check out my five-step mix guide at fivestepmix.com. And it's absolutely free. Punch in your email address. I'll send you an email with a PDF. Super great. Mixes will get better. You'll get better. We'll all be happy. It's awesome. All right. Thanks for watching. See ya.